What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to WWE 2K19 AI Universe Mode. This is SmackDown Week 30, and we are coming to you from San Jose, California. Welcome to SmackDown Live, where we are closer to our pay-per-view event. And I don't know if some of our superstars can wait that long. There are rivalries that are ready to explode tonight. The collision course toward the pay-per-view event continues, but tonight someone's going to And we are kicking World off week 30 in a huge way. We have a women's triple threat extreme rules match. We've got the Pirate Princess Kyrie Sane, the Queen Charlotte Flair, and the iconic Billy K, Billy K, kind of the wild card in this one. Charlotte Flair and Kyrie Sane have gone head to head quite a few times, but anything can happen in a triple threat match. And on top of that, anything can happen in Extreme Rules. Here we go, kicking off week 30. The following contest is an Extreme Rules match. Making her way to the ring from Yamaguchi, Japan, Kairi Sane. Here comes the queen. And her opponents first. From the Queen City, Charlotte Flair. One half of the Australian duo known as the Iconics. And from Sydney, Australia, Billy Kay. And here we go, triple threat extreme rules. No rope break, no count out, no disqualification. Pinfall, submission, or knockout must take place inside the squared circle. And Billy Kay and Kyrie Sane gonna go at it to start this one off. Double axe handle. And the Pirate Princess going right after the Queen, but Charlotte leveling Sane with a clothesline. These two are not in a rivalry anymore, hence uh, why it's a triple threat match. But uh, there's still bad blood between the two. And Charlotte now sliding to the outside here. And what what is she doing? Oh my god, Charlotte with the figure four using the ring post. And that is not good for Kyrie Sane. All three women on the outside of the ring. And Charlotte, oh God, Cole said the knee. Oh Jesus. Well, starting off this show pretty trash, aren't we Cole? <laughs> Ooh, nice roundhouse by Kay. And keep in mind, all slams 10 times more impactful on the outside. That's a one inch thick pad with concrete underneath. Does not break your fall very much, I can tell you. That much, 100% honest. Now Charlotte Flair eating the outside mat. K and S oh, Kyrie Sane face first into the steel ring post. Billy K picking Sane up to her feet. Oh, and a slap to the face. But now K off the ring post. Kyrie Sane did not appreciate that slap, and now Flair into the ring post, and everyone's eating steel tonight. Picking Flair up to her feet, Looks back like in the ring. the ring. Kyrie back into the ring as well, and in comes Billy Kay. Oh, chop to the spine, dropping the Pirate Princess, and here comes Flair with the arm breaker. Billy Kay with the Fireman's Carry takeover. Has Charlotte by the back of the neck. Gonna introduce Charlotte's face to the top turnbuckle. 
Back in comes Sane. K with elbow strikes and going for the discus but missing and Sane with a spike her Karana. Picking K up to her feet going for the drop kick but K with a kick to the thigh. Going after Charlotte but Charlotte with a clothesline dropping the iconic Billy K. Charlotte was going for the spear there. Billy Kay was able to get out of the way and Sane with a backflip reverse DDT. Beautiful move. Kick to the gut. Sane looking to take it to Flair. Forearm to the face. Oh, going for a huge forearm. But Charlotte targeting that leg with a leg breaker. And keep in mind, Charlotte has already locked in a figure four on Kyrie Sane around the ring post. So Sane's legs already very weakened. And Sane now turning K around. Shoulder to the gut. Sane marching to the other side of the ring. The Pirate Princess with the sliding D. Sane now back into the ring. Changes her mind. Goes straight up to the top rope. And Sane... No! K able to roll out of the way. Charlotte with a spear. I knew it was only a matter of time. Charlotte, Charlotte was looking for her opportunity and she damn sure found it. Insane Russian leg sweep putting the queen down. Picking Flair up to her feet. Charlotte shoving Sane away. Kick to the gut. And Flair with a sit out neck breaker. Billy Kay slowly making her way to her feet. Turning Kay around here and Charlotte is looking for the figure eight. And there are no rope breaks in this one but Kyrie Sane right there to break up that figure eight leg lock. If Sane was not in, still in the ring, I believe Charlotte would have made Billy Kay tap. And once again, going right after the legs of the Pirate Princess. Oh, stretching the hamstring. Charlotte missing shots here. Going for the cover. One, no. And that figure eight must have taken a lot out of Billy Kay. Still has not even attempted to get up off the mat. Here comes Kyrie Sane with a dragon screw. K finally stirring up on the shoulder and Sane with a stun gun to Charlotte Flair. Billy K with shades of K, picture perfect. One, two, three, and Billy K, the wild card, picking up the three count over Kyrie Sane. Here is your winner, Billy Kay. And congratulations to the iconic one, hands down her biggest victory so far here in universe mode. But we are moving on in the evening, and up next, we have tag team action. Akum and Ray Zar, the authors of Pain, being joined by Drake Maverick at ringside going up against El Mago and Baron Blade of the Indie Invaders and they will be joined at ringside by K-Jack. The Indie Invaders have still been on quite the roll as of late, have, have won 90% of their matches completely by themselves, but will, that, will they be able to overcome the aggression and the brute strength of authors of pain here we go tag team action it's devastation time Unnerving. A couple of bad, bad dudes. On the way to the ring, 
accompanied by Drake Maverick at a combined weight of 620 pounds, Akum and Razor, the authors of Pain. Accompanied by K. Jack, and at a combined weight of 491 pounds, El Mago and Baron Blade. And here we go, set for this match to begin. El Mago and Akum starting off for their respective teams. And Akum starting out showing off that power I was talking about with an over-the-head choke suplex. And another choking toss laying out the luchador El Mago. Indian Vader's tag team used to be El Mago and Cole Quinn. Cole Quinn able to capture the United Kingdom Championship and is now in the singles division worrying about defending his title, Baron Blade, replacing Cole Quinn in the tag team. And here comes the brains of BCW. And Baron Blade with a snap suplex. And Blade, 100% the veteran of the Indie Invaders. And now Akum has Blade by the back of the neck, but Baron with the back elbows to the gut of the big man. Baron Blade's no slouch when it comes to size either. Oh, STO. What whiplash to the neck of Baron Blade. And Akum now tagging in Razar, the bigger of the two authors of pain. Oh. Baron Blade ducking under, getting the three kicks to the thigh, but here comes Razor. Oh my god. Fireman's carry position just slamming Blade down to the mat. And Blade now dragging Razor towards Indy Invader territory. And back in comes the luchador El Mago. That was until Carmella's over now Mago gonna work on the arm of Razor, slamming it and twisting it into the mat, and he's going for it again, trying to take away some of the power of the big man. Now El Mago stretching out the hamstring, going from working on the arms to working on the legs, but Razor coming back, tripping up El Mago. Irish whip into the turnbuckle. Tag, back in comes Akum, and looks like we're gonna see the knee strikes. Yes, into the double gut buster. Not good for El Mago. But here he comes with a back body drop using some power to lift Akum off his feet. Has the arm here and the monkey flip to the big man. Picking Akum up to his feet into the turnbuckle. Tag back in comes Baron Blade. Snapmare double kick to the chest. And look at this wheelbarrow senton. Beautiful tag team move by the Indian Invaders. Baron Blade knows that was a pretty move, but Akum leaping for the tag. In comes Razor, shoulder tackle. Back elbow. And Akum coming like a house of fire. Backbreaker putting Baron Blade down. Going for the cover, but Baron Blade with a shoulder up at one. Or not even at one, before the one count. Rolling out of the way, and here comes Baron with a clothesline, taking Razor down to the mat. Oh, Baron Blade going for some form of cutter, but instead gets a lariat. One. No, only a one count, and Razor really took Blade's head off with that one. But Baron Blade is a fighter. Baron Blade actually holds a victory over Shawn Michaels here in Universe Mode. And El Mago with the kick. 
Razar tried to go for the shoulder tackle, but the quickness of El Mago, and speaking of El Mago, he is now the legal man. Oh, choke suplex yet again. And Razar not done with Baron Blade, shoulder tackle. And Blade gonna roll to the outside. El Mago completely on his own for the time being. Tag, in comes Akum and AOP with the last chapter. El Mago has got to be done. Baron Blade cannot break it up. Two, no. El Mago with all the heart in the world. Able to get the shoulder up and Drake Maverick and K-Jack have not gotten involved thus far. Irish Whip missing the splash. Here comes Akum. Uh-oh, pump hand. Oh my God. Akum with a pump handle. Death Valley Driver. What a move. That definitely did a number on El Mago, but the Luchador is looking to end it with a flying elbow. He did not catch all of it, but did he catch enough? No, he's going to make the tag to the fresher Baron Blade. Blade now elbow to the chest, and that was smart by El Mago. He knew he did not catch all of that flying elbow into the turnbuckle. Oh, Baron Blade missing the hip attack into AOP's turnbuckle. But Baron Blade with the reversal back into the opposite turnbuckle. Oh, Blade missing the kick though. Tag into El Mago. Up on the second rope, double axe handle to the arm. And right back into the turnbuckle again and missing the splash yet again. That move is just not working out for the Luchador tonight. Tag in to Razor. And once again, AOP going to put the knees to the gut. And take down the Luchador, the magician. And Razor just going to rain down fists. El Mago's got to get a tag back into Baron Blade once again, but Razor not going to allow that one to happen. El Mago crawling, leaping. In comes Baron Blade. Double axe handle. And a clothesline. And another double axe handle. Baron Blade is feeling it here, and he is setting up to put Razor away with the triple kicks to the face. Hook in the leg, one, no. Akum right in there to break that one up. And oh wait, oh, Razor, or Akum with a huge headbutt. Both Razor and Blade are down in the center of the ring. One of these two men are gonna have to make it to their feet sooner or later, and here comes Razor. Making the tag to Akum. And here we go, another choke suplex to Baron Blade. But here comes Blade with a back body drop, kick to the spine. El Mago back up on the apron. Blade with a stomp to the arm. Dragging Akum towards a... I don't know if that's Akum or Razor. I need to figure out which is which. Okay, I have been right the entire time. Okay, yes, that is Akum. Into the turnbuckle and Baron Blade missing the hip attack again up on the shoulders of the big man. <clears throat> Stun gun throat first across the top turnbuckle. And Blade tagging in El Mago. Oh, and El Mago missing the drop kick. And that might be the beginning of the end for the Indy Invaders. Acom with the reverse Russian leg sweep and El Mago's gotta be done. One, two, no! The Luchador still in it.
barely. But nonetheless, the match is going to continue. Oh, going for that signature leg sweep. Not able to hit it. R the big boot to Akum. Into the turnbuckle. And he just cannot hit that splash. Over the head, belly to belly suplex. Things are not looking good for El Mago, especially because Akum is setting up to put him away. Power bomb knocking El Mago out. Your winners, the authors of pain. Let's take another look at these guys getting after it. He was on point the entire match, as you can see here. Here are your winners, Akum and Razor, the authors of and AOP able to stop the Indian Vader's momentum in its tracks here tonight. We are moving on in the evening. And up next, one-on-one -on -one action, we've got the Berserweight, Pete Dunn, going one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes the money, Shane McMahon. I honestly have no clue what's going to happen in this one. So without further ado, here we go. Dunn versus McMahon, one-on-one. -on -one. Making his way to the ring from Birmingham, England, weighing in at 205 pounds, Pete Dunne. Here comes the commiss. Say no more. And his opponent, from New York City, weighing in at 235 pounds, Shane McMahon. And here we go. The Bruiserweight versus Shane O'Mac. And this one should be interesting to say the least. Dunn receiving a loss to Luke Harper last week, looking definitely to pick up a win in this one you don't want to start a losing streak here on smackdown and this is one of those matches where it's hard to believe and uh shane actually keeping up with dunn with this chain wrestling very surprising by shane o'mac shane is usually just about throwing hands and jumping off something that's 30 feet high and right back into the headlock goes Pete Dunn. <clears throat> but Shane shoving the bruiserweight down into, oh my God, the technical wrestling here by Shane McMahon is quite impressive, if I do say so myself. Kick to the spine of Pete Dunn. Oh, going for another one, went to the well one too many times. But, oh, able to land on his feet out of the back suplex. And here comes those lightning quick fists of Shane McMahon. Clothesline to the back of the neck. Oh, leg breaker. And that had to have done some damage to the knee of Pete Dunn. He's definitely targeting that knee. But Dunn able to shove McMahon down to the mat. Oh my God, Shane McMahon with the Olympic Slam. Pete Dunn popping right back up to his feet. And Dunn with the float over DDT. McMahon has been taking it to Dunn thus far. But Pete Dunn biting the fingers. Shane McMahon better be careful. Pete Dunn will bite a finger off. He doesn't care. And Dunn locking the arms. Butterfly suplex. Putting Shane O'Mac down on the mat. But here comes Shane with a back elbow. Oh, he was looking for that Shane O'Mac shuffle, but instead receives the forearm to the jaw. Dragging Shane to the center of the ring and done with a knee strike to the face. 
Watch how Shane proves his worth by stepping into the ring. Flipping the Shane ball. over, hooking the leg. One. And Shane O'Mac with a shoulder up. Here comes Shane shoving Dunn to the side, kick to the gut. Oh, but there's that forearm by the bruiser weight. Irish whip sending Shane O'Mac crashing to the floor. We're taking the action to ringside here in San Jose. The fans getting a bird's eye view of this one. Up on the shoulder of Dunn, but oh, oh, Dunn's back gave out. That is not good for the bruiserweight. Shane putting Dunn back into the ring. Oh, Dunn going for the bicycle big boot. Shane with the Irish whip, turning Dunn around. And Shane, oh no. Oh, we have seen this before. Putting Dunn in the tree of woe. And Shane is not afraid to fly. Oh, God. Don't kill Dunn, please. Oh, God. Tree of Woe, coast to coast. But Shane grabbing the back as well. I'm sure Dunn received more damage from that one, but Shane definitely did some damage to himself. One, two, and Dunn somehow getting the shoulder up. Pete Dunn is a fighter. Strike to the spine. Shane got done by the back of his neck. <coughs> Slingshot off the top rope. And Shane with the headlock. Wrenching on the head and neck of the bruiserweight. Pete Dunn has got to do something big soon or it's all over. And Dunn back up to his feet, forearm. Irish whip to the opposite turnbuckle and Dunn with that Insiguri. And this is what Dunn needed, hooking the leg. One, two, no. 1.9 and Shane O'Mac gets the shoulder up. But Pete Dunn is looking to put him away. Forearm, hooking him up. Bitter end, dead center of the ring, one, two, and Shane actually with the shoulder up as soon as the ref's hand hit the mat for the two count. Oh, and Dunn now has the arms just stomping the back and now kicking Shane right in the face. Hammerlock, and Pete Dunn with that joint manipulation and dropping both knees across the spine. Pete Dunn is a master of transitioning from move to move. Up onto the shoulders, but Dunn, reverse DDT. Hooking the leg, one. And McMahon able to kick out at one, still with plenty left in the tank. But how long? Will this energy last? Oh my God, Pete Dunn! Tiger suplex. Shane McMahon dumped on the back of his head, but here he comes with a dragon screw leg whip. And Dunn, very smart, rolling onto the apron. Pinfall and submission must take place within the inside of the squared circle. Both men to the floor yet again. And here comes Dunn with a shot to the head. Shane reversing back and forth and back into the ring. Dunn picking the leg, stun gun. Back into the ring. And Pete Dunn, beautiful back suplex. Hooking the leg again, one. And Shane again getting the shoulder up at one. What does Pete Dunn have to do? Clotheslining Dunn right back to the outside. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The Shane O'Mac shuffle. It looks like Shane's not even gonna go the outside, just gonna wait for Dunn to get back in the ring. Telling Dunn to get up. Ref up to a three count. And here comes Pete Dunn back into the ring. 
and done dumping Shane on the back of his head. And the Bruiserweight looking for the pin again. One, two, and Shane again kicking out. Elbow straight to the face of Pete Dunn into the turnbuckle. <clears throat> Oh, but Dunn with the reversal here. And Pete Dunn with the Enziguri again. And this time it looks like, wait a second. The bruiser weight to the top rope. You never see this. And Pete Dunn going for the diving stomp. Shane bringing him down into the headlock. You barely ever see Pete Dunn go for something like that up to his feet and Shane DDT planting done and I think it is all over to no not even a two count how are these men still going uh oh and Shane McMahon locking in the triangle choke Pete Dunn in major major trouble you can see, look at the arm swinging, Dunn trying anything he can. And Shane McMahon releasing the triangle. And Shane, now the one headed to the top rope. And Shane, shooting star press. Good God. One, two, and done. Somehow, still going in this match. Into the turnbuckle. Kick to the gut. Shane with the stomps. Oh no. Oh no, he's setting up done again. He already hit it in the tree of woe. And McMahon back up to the top. Coast to coast, Pete Dunn knocked out your winner, Shane McMahon. Let's take another look at what made that matchup so memorable. Check him out here. Here is your winner, Shane McMahon. Both of these men gave it all they had, but in the end, it was Shane the very suicidal Shane McMahon able to pick up the victory over the Bruiserway. Pete Dunn is now on a two-week losing streak. Damn it! We are moving on to your main event match of the evening. One-on-one, -on -one, we've got the monster among men. Going one-on-one -on -one with the Woken Matt Hardy. Get ready, people, because it's time for your main event of week 30 here in San Jose, California. Batten down the hatches. Here comes the monster of men. Making his way to the ring. Weighing in at 385 pounds, Braun Strowman. No, not this guy. And his opponent. From Cameron, North Carolina, weighing in at 236 pounds, Matt Hardy. Here we go, main event time, and Strowman 100% looking ready to go against the Woken One. <clears throat> oh, and San Jose with the delete chance already. Firmly behind Hardy. But Hardy getting rocked by the gargantuan skull of the monster among men. And oh, look at Matt delivering the clothesline. Braun just absorbing it. Forearm to the spine and another one. And 
taking the monster among men off his feet but here comes Strowman with a clothesline and this one has been full throttle as soon as the bell rang these two were going at it shoulder to the gut Braun with the reversal and putting Matt Hardy on the top rope oh my god this is not good for Matt Hardy Jesus Christ oh my god God, back body drop off the middle rope. Hardy had to have been 12 to 15 feet in the air. But Matt Hardy with a standing tornado DDT. Good God, these two men are really going to put on a show here in San Jose. Forearms to the face. Oh wait, Braun coming back with a European uppercut. Oh my God, military press. Braun is another man who's been on quite the losing streak. One in a kick out. And I guess it looks like Strowman is sick of it. Slamming the arm down, stomp to the face. Huge knee to the jaw and Strowman absorbing the energy from this crowd and Matt Hardy is in all kinds of trouble here deadlifting the woken one off the mat gut wrench suplex and Braun going for another cover one and Hardy again with the shoulder up huge kick to the spine but here comes Matt with a clothesline. Taking Strowman down, head scissors, delivering the forearm shots to the skull. Picking Strowman up to his feet. And Hardy, side effect, what power by Woken Matt Hardy. Hook in the leg, one. No, only a one count. Hardy cannot believe it. And now Matt looking to delete the monster among men. Kick to the gut. But no, Strowman. Back body drop reversing the twist of fate. And Strowman now gonna delete Matt Hardy. Up to his feet. And Strowman. Running power slam! Can he end it here? One, two, and Matt Hardy with the shoulder up and Strowman in awe. But I'm sure that did nothing but anger the monster among men. Now clawing at the shoulder. Throwing Matt down to the mat, stomp to the gut, and Strowman, oh my god, almost 400 pounds stepping over the sternum of Hardy. Picking him up to his feet, Hardy with a jawbreaker, going for another clothesline, Braun does not go down, no, Braun refuses to leave his feet into the turnbuckle, clothesline to the back of the neck. And Matt with a leg breaker. Trying to do whatever damage he can to Braun Strowman. And here comes Strowman with an arm drag. That was a weird move for Braun. Face first across the knee. The knee! But here we go, back and forth. Matt Hardy coming back against Strowman. And Strowman tossing Hardy over the top to the floor. And the ref begins the slow count to 10. Kick to the gut, and Matt Hardy knows better getting right back in the ring, but Braun dragging him right back to the outside. He wants to deal damage to Hardy. Rolling Matt back in the ring. And Braun, oh, slamming Hardy chest first across the apron. And back in comes Strowman. Up to his feet. 
And Braun lifting Hardy up. Yakuza Cutter knocking Matt Hardy out. Your winner, the monster among men. Strowman celebrating his victory. Um, he, what? Strowman did not win a championship. But here comes the actual United States champion, Bobby Roode. How did Strowman steal Roode's title? I don't know. But Roode setting up Strowman title off the skull. The United States champion delivering a message to the monster among men and Rude may have just signed his death wish. And I'm not sure what problems Rude has with Strowman. I'm not sure how the ref got his hands on the title and just said, here, Braun, you're now champion. And then Rude came out and he was like, this is my motherfucking title. I don't know what's going on. But nonetheless, Rude just hit Braun in the face with a belt. And when Braun wakes up, he's going to be a very angry monster. And we have one little piece of business to take care of to end off week 30. We've got the European champion, the lone wolf, Baron Corbin. Wonder what this is about. This is going to get interesting. This could honestly be about a few things. Let's find out. Not making any friends, but not really. Listen up, because I'm only going to say this one time. Some people here just don't get it. They think they can come to the WWE, make their bones by taking out the biggest guy in the yard. These, these people, and you all know who I'm talking about, are about to commit the biggest mistake of their careers. The only bones they're gonna, they're going to make are their own. What are you talking about, Corbin? The entire WWE locker room is afraid right now. Do you know why? It's because they realize that a new threat has risen to turn their dreams into nightmares, to turn their joyous existence into unimaginable maelstrom. There is a new lion amongst the lambs, me. You can boo all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm the greatest superstar to ever step foot inside a ring. You know it, I know it, the entire locker room knows it. It's only a matter of time before I run through every single superstar who dares to get in my way as I ascend to the top of SmackDown. You all want to see the best, right? So stop paying attention to all these other mediocre superstars that aren't good enough to lace my boots. I'm numero uno, the main event. I'm all you need. I ain't got time for you people anymore. Y'all are literally not worth the crap under my shoe. So now it's on to bigger and better things. Peace. Typical Baron Corbin coming out saying he's the best, insulting the crowd. But he is your European champion. And uh, you know that probably riled up a few of the guys in the back. I'm sure quite a few of them want to get their hands not only on the European championship, but get their hands on Corbin and teach him a lesson. But that was it for SmackDown Week 30. And I was thinking about it when I had the microphone off. This match was pretty damn good. But I think Pete Dunne and Shane McMahon was a little bit better. And that is my match of the evening. Be sure to let me know what your match tonight was in the comments down below. And that was it for SmackDown Week 30. Remember, guys, if you enjoy my content, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Brandon Brandy Bear for both. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you guys for joining me here for week 30 of SmackDown. And goodbye from San Jose, California.